Hey Don, it's a very important day for you. Um, can you tell us why? This is a big battle. This is a battle between corporate reg uh, reputation, corporate interests, multinationals against Joe Public, against freedom of speech. So here we are at the BC Court of Appeal. You've got the, the goddess of justice over there, the scales of justice. So the judge in this case is being asked, which is more important? The reputation of businesses like this Norwegian-owned multinational Cermak and their subsidiary mainstream Canada and EWOS or the rights of individuals to express legitimate criticisms against salmon farming. So on the, the public interest side you have people like David Suzuki who in 2004 said salmon farming, farm salmon, it's poison. I wouldn't feed my children that. Now if the judge rules against me Statements like David Suzuki and others, reports in the peer-reviewed paper Science, and uh, newspaper reports, global TV coverage, CBC News, they'll have to revoke basic statements like salmon farming spreads disease. Now we know through the Cohen Commission and the excellent film Salmon Confidential that salmon farming does spread diseases. So what the um, Norwegian multinational are doing, they're abusing the Canadian legal system. They're trying to muzzle global criticism about their polluting, filthy, lethal operations. And uh, so this is not just a battle from Cermak against Don Staniford, mainstream against the Global Alliance against industrial aquaculture. This is a battle against corporation against the public. And this is what Joel Bakken talked about in his documentary, The Corporation. On the one hand, you have the corporate psychopath that doesn't have any feelings, trying to sue for loss of feelings and loss of reputation uh, from me. And they're trying to get damages of uh, over $125,000 and a permanent injunction against speaking out against the salmon farming industry. Okay, well now, what the uh, appellant is saying is that basically you're doing this out of malice. You have no facts, you have no scientific evidence. You basically said that uh, salmon farming uh, kills, salmon farming causes cancer, salmon farming is poison, and toxic. What, what do you base this on? How do you argue with them saying that you really don't have any facts? Well, pardon my French, but that's a load of bollocks. Um, Daniel Ratcliffe, who plays Harry Potter, that's his favorite English word, but bollocks or codswallop just means that's a load of crap. I've campaigned against salmon farming since 1993, so that's 20 years I've assembled documentary evidence, scientific research, there's peer-reviewed uh, science showing the impact of salmon farming, uh, spreading sea lice, spreading infectious diseases, killing marine mammals. And the, the weight of scientific evidence is in. And one of the reasons we launched the, the big tobacco, big aquaculture campaign, the Salmon Farming Kills campaign, uh, paralleling salmon farming with smoking is that the way the the salmon farming industry has tackled this issue and tried to muzzle uh, criticism and try to smear the science try to mislead the public is exactly what big tobacco did with cigarettes and the link with cancer so you know that the, there is a time lag difference here so it was in the 60s and the 1950s where the science started to rear its ugly head linking smoking with cancer and it wasn't until the late 1990s and a paper in 2001 uh, by Dr. Michael Easton from here in Vancouver sponsored by the David Suzuki Foundation um, that showed that contaminants DDT, dieldrin, PCBs, dioxins, these are cancer causing chemicals were in farm salmon. So that was over 10 years ago and since then in, nine, in 2004 there was more peer reviewed science showing that cancer causing chemicals were in farm salmon and there was an elevated cancer risk. So that's, that's the science and so some of the cigarette packets just ask the question. 
you know, is salmon farming, does it elevate cancer risk? And that's based upon scientific fact, scientific evidence. Now, just like big tobacco and the smoking industry, they try to muddy the waters and the salmon industry comes up with other studies that refute that evidence. And there is a lot of controversy in some of the science, especially on the link uh, of infectious diseases and whether infectious salmon anemia is here in British Columbia already. But on the contaminants in farm salmon, that's clear cut. It's watertight science. So I'm being sued uh, for saying scientific fact. How does this compare to a slap suit? Are they just basically trying to muzzle you and everybody else that's uh trying to present uh, the facts as to what's happening with our wild salmon here in BC? This is a classic slap suit. This is a strategic lawsuit against public participation. I had one of these in uh, 2007 against Creative Salmon. And, you know, in the music industry they say where there's a hit, there's a writ. So, environmental campaigners, social justice campaigners, health campaigners have all got hits against the salmon farming industry and the contaminants in farm salmon in particular. And the industry um, fights back. It tries to muzzle uh, criticism and these lawsuits are a horrible way of these corporations abusing the legal system to stop fair, legitimate, honest opinion. So this lawsuit is all about the defense of free speech and the rights of individuals to speak out. And if uh, CERMAC, which is effectively owned by the Norwegian government, if they, this multinational wins this lawsuit, it will have a chilling effect, not just for me, but they will be able to go onto Facebook. Cermax lawyers can police Facebook and you'll have to remove statements like, friends don't let friends eat farm salmon. So there's a Facebook group with over 2,000 people that say, friends don't let friends eat farm salmon. Another statement is, wild salmon don't do drugs. And there's other basic statements. So they're trying to rewrite the rules and corporations may own the salmon farming industry. They may own Stephen Harper. They may own Christy Clark. But thankfully still in British Columbia, they do not own the law. And hopefully, uh, after this judgment, Justice Bennett, Justice Saunders, and Justice Tyso will uphold the law and defend free speech. Okay, one last question. Why, in the face of all of this evidence, are the provincial and federal government defending the fish farm industry so vociferously that they basically um, appear to be allowing them to destroy our wild salmon? There's a huge issue here in terms of disease risk and financial liabilities and lawsuits. If infectious salmon anemia, for example, or HSMI or pancreas disease and other diseases are reported in British Columbia, the floodgates will be open to lawsuits, to insurance claims, and if Canada and British Columbia reports an official case of ISA, now ISA is, is a reportable disease to the World Organization for Animal Health, the OIE, just like BSE, just like mad cow disease. So when a mad cow was reported in Alberta maybe 10 years ago, the industry, the cattle industry, lost millions and millions of dollars. The same thing is on the line here for the salmon farming industry. If Christy Clark and Stephen Harper admit the truth, if these Norwegian companies admit the truth that infectious diseases are here in British Columbia and they've spread to Pacific wild salmon, it'll be a billion billion dollar uh, lawsuits and open the floodgates to losses, financial losses. In Chile, for example, uh, when ISA was discovered there in 2007, 2008, they lost $2 billion and they don't even have any wild salmon. So here in British Columbia, the wild Pacific salmon is the icon of the province of British Columbia. And if that is going to be decimated and made extinct by the salmon farming industry, the Atlantic salmon farming industry, owned by Norway, then there's going to be trouble. So 
That's why the Canadian government and the provincial government uh, want to bury the science. They want to smear people like Alexandra Morton, who's telling the truth. They want to prevent the testing of diseases on, on salmon farms. They want to stop scientists like Dr. Christy Miller. They want to muzzle her from even speaking to the media because they're afraid of the consequences.